Hello, friends. Today's episode is brought to you by WalletWin, Catholic financial formation for the whole family and creators of the Catholic Money Academy. We all know that money can be both a blessing and a burden, a source of peace and contentment or stress and wounds. Do you ever worry about how you're going to make ends meet in today's economy? Is money causing tension in your marriage and family life? Do you wish that you could be more generous with your giving? Would you like to learn how to trust God to provide for your financial needs even during times of uncertainty? Most of us were never taught how to manage our money from a Catholic perspective, and this has left many of us feeling weighed down about finances and unable to freely pursue God's calling. This is why I'm excited to tell you about the Catholic Money Academy from WalletWin. Since 2017, they've helped thousands of Catholics eliminate debt, build their savings, morally invest, and increase their generosity through their step-by-step program rooted in Catholic principles. They take the guesswork out of managing money inside the Catholic Money Academy with their engaging video content, live coaching calls, and thorough financial formation. If you're ready to feel confident and at peace with your finances, visit walletwin.com slash abiding together to start your free trial. And don't forget, they've got your entire family covered with their Wallet Win Kids Money classes too. So head over to walletwin.com slash abiding together. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hi, friends. Welcome to the Abiding Together podcast. And we are delighted to be with you on this adventure. And I know that the Lord is going to do wonderful things in all of our hearts. The Abiding Together podcast is a place where you can find connection, rest, and encouragement on your journey with Jesus Christ. And wherever you find yourself in the world, wherever you find yourself in your life, you are most welcome here. And we know that the Lord will speak to you. My name is Sister Miriam James Heidland, and every week I am joined by two of my very dearest friends, Heather Kim and Michelle Benzinger. And we speak about what the Lord is doing in our life. We speak about our sorrowful mysteries, our joyful mysteries, and how the Lord is leading us in it all. And you are most welcome right here, right here. So please grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and welcome home. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Abiding Together podcast and happy Easter. We are still in the Easter season, which is very wonderful and spring is springing all over the place. And today we are going to begin a two-part series on leading with God-given authority. So it might be helpful for you in whatever area of leadership you serve, whether you're a parent, whether you're at work, whether you're just around other people, like how do we we lead with the authority that God gives us versus some other kind of authority or some kind of grasping. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Michelle and Heather, how are we? Michelle, you're busy with work projects at your house. Yes. I'm kind of, I don't know what the word is. I can't think of a really good adjective, but I really don't love the fact that this is being recorded on video because I'm like sweaty and gross. And I stop because I'm doing home projects to come record. Real life, baby. Real life. Real life, baby. So you're getting the organic (laughs) Benzinger at its best. So sorry, people. (laughs) That is it. But I'm excited to be with you all. So there you go. Heather, how are you? Yeah, I was just saying to you guys right before we started, I'm like, it is absolutely nuts this week. Like I normally don't feel that, but I do. And I mean, all good things. Like I'm doing some videos for a book project for Advent that I'm working on with Ave Maria Press and Sister Miriam, I get to see you tomorrow, which I can't even believe that the Father gifted us with this. So that's super exciting. And I saw Michelle last week. So I'm like, I'm just sandwiched right between you two. I'm just so grateful. Tell our listeners the last time you saw Sister, because you told me this um, when we were together last week. And I was like, no, that is not correct. That cannot be true. I think... I think the last time we saw each other, sister, was when we randomly ran into each other at the Dallas airport. Is that true? <laughs> I think so. I like, think so, friend. That was like a That's year crazy. and a half ago, I think. Um, yeah. Which was so glorious. It was a so glorious. But now was you're not like. Amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you're not running into us. You're going to stay with me. You're going to stay for a couple of days. We're going to take you around. Mm-hmm. It's going to be beautiful. And I'm going to see Michelle on Sunday, too. So it's like. All the it's things, your Easter you know? blessing. We're actually abiding together. <laughs> We're all just person. abiding together. <laughs> yeah. So, so good. Well, Heather, you want to start us off? You want to lead us in this discussion? Sure. Yeah. This, um, just the conception of this idea was because I've done a couple of women's sessions recently with De- both were with Debbie Herbeck, actually, our good friend. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about it, one just with women of all ages, young women, older women. And the second one was specifically for moms. And it just got me thinking that there's so often that we don't lead with the authority that God has given to us, like through our baptism, through our confirmation, through just being people of God. And and I think that it it tends to leave us wondering and questioning what we should do, probably more mm-hmm. than we should be. And, and that, that yeah. 
just gives room for the enemy to come in and cause doubt and cause us to fear and gets our voice quiet. So we're going to break all of that open. And I really want people to enter in. If we're talking about motherhood, just know everyone is welcome at this table and in this conversation. So if you're any kind of leadership, all of us are called to spiritual maternity so we can just apply from whatever place we're at. So I just came across this scripture yesterday from Deuteronomy chapter four, verse nine. It says, only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. And what struck me about that was just how important it is to hold fast to the things that God has revealed to us through his word, through the Mm -hmm. church, and to hold them deep in our hearts so that we can pass them on to those that God has entrusted to us. And then there's this quote specifically like for parents, but I I want to also just bring leadership uh, under that umbrella too. And it's from the Catechism 2197. It says, the fourth commandment opens up the second table of the Decalogue. It shows us the order of charity. God has willed that after him we should honor our parents to whom we owe life and who have handed on to us the knowledge of God. We are obliged to honor and respect all of those whom God, for our good, has vested with his authority. Mm -hmm. So that'll be our start point for the conversation. Anything stand out to you guys from those two, the quote in the scripture? I think that, yeah, a couple of things from the Deuteronomy quote that you gave, the word that comes to me is remember. Mm Mm-hmm. Like remember, and that's the covenant over and over and over again is remember, remember the, I mean, the, like Israel keeps forgetting, like we keep forgetting. And so it's remembering who we are. It's remembering our identity. It's remembering our baptism. It's remembering. And the more we can remember the truth brings us in the right relationship. And it's from the right relationship that we lead or mentor or guide or guard. And so just kind of thinking about that of when, when we forget, you just think like the Israelites, when we forget who we are, it's difficult for us to really to be present to other people, to to give them what is good, true, and beautiful, uh, and it went, or we're we're trying to lead from a place of grasping or domineering or your domination, or we just mm-hmm. abdicate our throne, and all of that leads to chaos. So just yeah, it, for the first thing that comes to me is is remember. What about you, Michelle? Yeah, I've been thinking since Heather proposed this topic, I've been really thinking about it. When we were talking about it before, we were talking about abdicating authority, which we'll talk about in a, in a moment. But that was really convicting to me to abdicate authority. Like where in my own personal life have I abdicated authority? And then I'm going back to thinking when Jesus gave us authority, like in the New Testament, I have given you authority, you know, to trample over serpents and scorpions, all this, this, he has given it to you. But then there's another part in scripture where it says, take authority, you know, so Jesus has given us this authority, but do we receive it and take it? And I'm just trying to think of the different areas where I have not taken authority or where I have just let it lie dormant more so like, oh, like, oh, look, look at this gift. It's on the floor. Isn't that beautiful? Maybe I'll pick it up once in a while. I'm not. But then I realized, okay, to even have authority, we have to receive authority. And who do we receive authority for? We receive it from the father, you know, so we have to surrender daily to his authority and to be in proper alignment under him. And it was interesting. I was listening to something else this morning and the person was saying, oftentimes we treat God when we surrender to him, like we're losing a war, like we're surrendering to an enemy. And that one line, just like, ouch. Yeah. Like you think something like, oh, I just need to surrender this where it's like a heart, like it's, you treat God almost like he's the enemy. And I was really praying of that this morning and the Lord really just convicted me. He's like, surrender. I even wrote this. It says, We are not surrendering to an enemy. We are surrendering to the trustful, loving embrace of the Trinity. And true authority comes from true intimacy. You know, our authority comes in the secret place. It doesn't come from grasping for power or striving. It truly does come from abiding. And that is like a huge mind shift for all of us. Authority isn't a power play. Authority is a display of intimacy and real tangible love. And I think we've seen abuses of authority. So... You know, we usually think of authority oftentimes as a power trip and not it's a loving declaration instead. So, Heather? Yeah, I love that you're bringing up that point because I think many, uh, many of us have wounds around authority where authority has been lorded over us. It's been misused and it has caused a lot of pain and wounds in our life, whether it be from parents or teachers or people who have been in other positions, coaches, you know, (laughs) different, different positions of authority over us and they have misused their authority. And that's something important to, to notice is that our stories and the things that have happened to us in the past, they often make sense of our mm-hmm. present. 
you know, our present re- response and reaction to things. So if we have an issue with authority or we fear authority or we cower, you know, whenever someone in authority comes around, like just so often Jake and I look at each other and we go, don't we just make sense? Like based on our mm-hmm. past experiences, it just makes so much sense as to why. And that's a place where we can, Michelle, I love that you always say this, like approach ourselves with curiosity and compassion about those places. Mm-hmm. Because I like this part in in the quote from the catechism where it says, who for our good, God has vested them with authority. Mm-hmm. Like authority should always be used properly and in right order for our good Mm -hmm. so that it would actually be a blessing Mm -hmm. to us, you know, and that is the authority that we're talking about. God's authority is always for our good. It's if we look back in the garden, you know, he wasn't saying to Adam and Eve, like you're restricted and I'm holding out on you and I'm keeping the best thing from you guys. He was like, Mm I am giving you every good thing. It's this one thing that's actually going to hurt you that I'm asking you, you know, not to touch, but you, you have a choice to make. And so I, I think that just puts the the right lens on this conversation for us to just notice, okay, there's places where I may have been wounded by this and it's difficult for me to receive or then to know how to step into authority because I've never seen it modeled well. So how do I operate in this God-given authority, Michelle, that you're talking about that's talked about in scripture if I have only seen it done poorly? And so I think we can learn a lot even from people in scripture mm-hmm. and other mm-hmm. people around us who can be better models of mm-hmm. that. What do you think about that, sister? Just places that need to be healed from the wounds of disordered authority. Gosh, yeah, I, I, we all ha- we all have those, and I think we've all inflicted them on other people mm-hmm. too. Like we've all had places where we failed, and I, I I really love the combination of what you both are saying because it is true that you know when God exercises authority, it's out of love, and it is out of Him leading us into the ways that are good, true, and beautiful. Not because I said so, and I think. Dr. Bob Schutz, we did a healing the whole person retreat this weekend. And he was saying one of the major things that needs to be healed in our lives is our image of God mm-hmm. and our image of God in, certain, in every situation, not just a generic image of God, but our image of God here. And how often do we think God is holding out on us or, and we, I mean, we look at our parents and you know, all of us probably had parents at one time said, so just do it. Cause I said, so that's why, oh, yeah. that's why you have to do it. Just go do it. Cause I said, so, and you're like, I don't want to, <laughs> but, <laughs> but all of us, all of us need that loving authority. All of us need a holy order. And you talk about holy orders and how in the garden before sin, there was holy order and there was loving, like loving obedience. Obedire means to hear, to listen. And from that rupture of sin, you know, from the rupture of communion comes chaos and the unruliness, but also the places where it's self-reliant, like, don't tell me what to do. And and a lot of that, you know, is it's a part of it's just broken human nature, but part of it's a reaction to misused authority. Mm-hmm. So it's I think sometimes it can be the all or nothing. It's either kind of a, a, a like a, a fearful, like a dominating, fearful obedience, mm-hmm. or it's like a total disregard. And that's neither is what God is asking of us. Like you look at how Jesus, you know, Jesus says, I do, I do the works of my father. I say what my father, you know, tells me to say, or my, you know, I do what, what the father's telling me to do. And so that, that kind of reflection of love is what God is calling us to, mm-hmm. because all of us need that. All, all of us need that loving adherence to a voice that leads us to eternity. We can't, we can't be left to ourselves, left to ourselves. is ne- usually never, <laughs> never a good thing. Yeah. And I think it's easy, like for each of us, like when we have had authority to Lord over us in our little places, then we want to be seen in like this grandiose way. And we want to be noticed mm-hmm. and we want to be, you know, the look at me, look at me. And I think one of the idols of this time is like, and we've talked about this before on the podcast, that we'll set up a for scraps of worldly in- influence. We want worldly influence, like, you know, mm-hmm. influencers or whatever, where God wants to give us kingdom authority mm-hmm. and anointing. But man, we'll settle for those scraps of worldly influence. And not only that, when we go for worldly influence, like we said before, we abandon our places of authority that we're supposed to have in our day-to-day life, yeah. in our ordinary living life. That's where the beautiful authority comes. That's where like, you know, in Genesis, he gave us a dominion over the land. He gives us dominion over the earth. And we want to leave that dominion and go somewhere else. We want to forget the garden he's given us. And we want to go somewhere else where he's like, hey, I have fruitfulness right here in front of you in your ordinary lives. This is the most beautiful fruit kingdom living that you can have. And we look at other places out there instead of within or around us, you know, and it's in the ordinary that he makes the extraordinary, you know, where his kingdom becomes Mm -hmm. reality. And I think I've learned that more and more. And then like even really thinking about this subject, really reflecting on the areas where I've abused my my authority. And we'll talk about this more. We're making this a two-part series. Like because of my story, I'm very hypervigilant and I'll be like, okay, 
this is going to happen. This well, that can translate to really controlling because I don't, I want to know in my self-protective parts, I want to know the outcome. Like I need to know that everybody's going to be safe, but not in a free life-giving way safe. <laughs> in a, I want to control the outcome and let me figure it out myself. And that's damaging, you know, and I've had to go back to my kids and repent many times and to other people, even though it comes out of a good play, like my intentions are good, but you know, it says like the road to hell is paved with good intentions. They're not pure and they're not Mm -hmm, ordered mm -hmm. and they're not sanctified and purified like they need to be. And just really realizing that. Also, I think sometimes like all of us just get tired and we get complacent and we get apathetic. You're like, all right, I just, you know what? I don't really want to have authority. This may be my dominion in my garden, but hey, I'm going to let those weeds grow up. They're pretty. Look at them. Those weeds have flowers, you know, look at those. (laughs) Like just keep on growing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's even scarier. Like when we just get complacent and we get Mm -hmm. tired. I think we're, we're all kind of circling around these ideas of like the places where we've gotten it wrong, whether we've received it wrong or we've, or it's come out of us in, in a disordered kind of way. And And this isn't meant to be depressing or shaming or condemning in any way, but actually these places are really important that we talk about and acknowledge because it helps us to understand how things can be different, Mm -hmm. you know, and how they're supposed to be. So we both kind of use this, we've all used this word now, uh, abdicating. So let's just talk about that for a second. I was reflecting on The Crown and we've talked about this in the past, but I I like that show. The Crown is about Queen Elizabeth and the whole royal family and all that. And in the beginning episodes, what I thought was just like so interesting is that her dad uh, king George the sixth was never supposed to be the king. His brother was supposed to be the king. And because his brother wanted to have a divorce and get married to somebody else, you know, Michelle, it's like the settling for earthly, earthly treasures in a sense, he abdicated the throne. So that means he gave up his, his right to the throne and then the authority that would come with that. So then it was passed on to his brother who was the next in line. And as I watched that transpire and I just thought, oh my goodness, the ramifications all the way down through all of history forever because of that one decision, that one abdication, that was huge. And then I thought, What happens when I do that, you know, in my own life, in my own family, in my own positions where I, in leadership, where I'm afraid of having the hard conversation or I'm afraid of, you know, talking to someone about something or taking ownership of something and I abdicate the authority that God has given to me. It's like someone will pay Mm -hmm. for that, you know, down Mm -hmm. the road and there will be ramifications that many times we can't see. And, and I think often for many of us, it's out of fear that we end up Mm -hmm. like just giving up that authority and, and the enemy knows this. And so let's just set that straight. Like there is an enemy who is making all kinds of suggestions to us about why we should and shouldn't do things a certain way. And so he wants to silence us. He wants to silence the God given voice, the voice that will bring about good. And, and I, I love this particular scripture from it's second, uh, first Peter chapter two, And it says, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you're God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So it's like God has given us this royal priesthood and he's called us to this, you know, amazing inheritance so that we can declare his praises and his goodness that have called us out of darkness and thus it should be calling other people out of darkness. So in whatever positions of authority we're in, our mission is always united with Christ's mission, right? Like it's to, to set the prisoners free, you know, to bring those in mm-hmm. out of darkness into his wonderful light. Like that, that's how we should be using our authority. So whether we think about it as parents with children or whatever, I mean, that is just a different kind of lens for me to look at things through. It's, it's a high bar. When I think we continue, and when we talk about authority, we, we look at the person of Jesus, and we look at how he leads. How does Jesus lead? Because that is perfect authority, and you look at how he leads, for, first of all, by example. Like, he does the hard things. He's not afraid of conflict. He loves people. He is surprising people with his mercy, with his magnanimity, with his graciousness, with his goodness. He is not afraid to call people to excellence and call out hypocrisy, but he, because he himself, you know, is living in the truth. And so he's like, I'm the way, the truth and the life. And I, I think sometimes we're afraid that, you know, we have to lead by ourselves. We have to figure out on our own. We have to be perfect. And we don't have to do that. We, we turn to Jesus and we say, Jesus, you know, give me the grace to do this. You know, what, what are like, not, not what would Jesus do? Not that, but because Jesus is alive. So Lord, how are you calling me to respond here? What are you 
Lord, how are you loving here? Like just today I was praying, I, I was driving home from something and it's just kind of facing this quandary in my life. And I'm like, Lord, what are, Lord, what are you doing in this? Cause uh, my fear, like we were talking about rolling the stone back. My fear is like turning back to myself and trying to figure mm-hmm. out how to roll the stone back. Mm-hmm. But Christ is already at work in this situation. So how, you know, how are you already at work? Like, where's your authority, Lord? Where's your holy order that created the heavens and the earth, which sustains being itself? Like, where are you already at work here, mm-hmm. Lord? And I want to join in that. Like, whatever you're doing, I want to join in that. And I, I think it takes out a lot of the guesswork of, yeah, like, oh, it's up to me, or I just have to figure it out to make something up. We don't. So I'm looking at Jesus saying, okay, my life is coming into oneness with him, mm-hmm. not just kind of a mimicry, but my life is coming into oneness with him. So Jesus, bring me into your truth here. Bring me, lead, Jesus, you lead here. You mm-hmm. know, Jesus, take the wheel. You know what I'm saying? So like, you lead here. You lead here and show me how to do this because I, I don't know or whatever that is in our life. That's so good. And mm-hmm. uh, yes, and amen. And I was reflecting on almost the same thing today, sister, because there was a search situation and we were talking about this and there's a situation that I was dealing with personally mm-hmm. and I was really praying about it. And then I was thinking to myself, okay, I don't have to figure this out mm-hmm. on my own. Like this is not mine to figure out. Like this is the Holy Spirit. Like Holy Spirit, come and teach me. Like you know, you know all things. It tells the scripture. Holy Spirit, you know all things. So let me. And if we're like Heather, what you were talking about, we are. It tells us in scriptures we're co heirs with the kingdom. Like mm-hmm. we are co heirs with Christ. So this is our kingdom. This is our inheritance. This is our authority. So we're already there with it. You know, in the scripture also it says we are seated in heavenly places. That is a place of victory. So I have to approach everything through the lens of kingdom victory and not where we come through the victim. And so I was really praying about this situation. I'm like, come Holy Spirit. And then I asked myself, where have I grieved you in this situation, Holy Spirit? And like in that word, it means like grieved, blocked, disappointed, you know, where I've, and then really praying like in this time from, like it tells us from Easter to Pentecost, those 50 days are some of the most powerful days in the church's calendar. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Lord, I prayed this morning, Lord, I need a personal Pentecost. That is what I need. I need a personal Pentecost. I need to see through the lens of the Trinity and not my lens. I need to see through kingdom vision. I need to call forth, you know, your kingdom come, your will be done, not mine. And not just give it lip service, but I really want it where it is really deep down, where it is transformational. And I was thinking about to myself, when I have have experienced true life-giving authority, Chris, my husband is a great leader. It comes from intimacy. It's very healing. It's very life giving. It's very protective. And you really almost you sense God's presence in it. You sense something tender and kind, but yet strong. And I think that's the kind of authority the Lord is asking, inviting us into and display within ourselves, but also display in the world. And that's how his kingdom comes. But like that whole idea of like, okay, we need our own personal Pentecost. I mean, that is what he's asking for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so true. Wow, there's a lot in there, what you just said. I think what what you're talking about, the safety, isn't it nice when somebody just has it? Yes. Like there is that <laughs> oh experience and that's what authority you're should like, feel oh. like, you know, <laughs> the way that w- when you're just like somebody who sees mm-hmm. me and has my greatest good in mind yes. and has this and is leading me. I just go, oh, thank God. You know, like I just want to relax into that because so much of what I feel like I'm trying to hold up is all the places that someone doesn't have me or I don't believe that mm-hmm. that God might come through in something. And that creates this heavy burden that we're not meant to bear. Mm-hmm. Right? If God's yoke is easy and his burden is light, it's because the way that he ha- has authority over us when we submit to his kingship is because he's got this and he sees our greatest good and mm-hmm. what we need. You know, we're deeply loved there. And thus that shows us how we should also lead. But if we look at our past and, you know, we did our series on the the daughter, sister, mother, bride, and our identities, there, there are stuck places that we have. And there's mm-hmm. a reason for that, like we said at the beginning. And here's the thing, what you just said, Michelle. The resurrection power of God is real and he can change everything. Mm-hmm. He can change anything. There are places that we are stuck. They can become unstuck. This is the real living of the gospel. Like you guys know, I've just in the last week and I'm like, I'm giving it all to the 50 days of Easter grace that's going on right now. (laughs) There's been a massive breakthrough in my life. The things that I said, this will never happen. It will never, ever happen. I will never be able to. Actually, a lot of it has to do with my voice, right? I will never be able to speak these things. I will never be able to say what is actually deep, deep down in here and look at the Lord coming in like a warrior to set me free in that. And I think that these are places that 
that the Lord really, it, we have to be patient and we have to stay, 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 stay with him, stay mm-hmm. in the process, stay in the healing journey, because it's like sometimes it feels like forever. And then suddenly he comes, which we've talked about that before. But God wants to take us out of our stuck places and really release us in to to be who he created us to be so that we can bring his kingdom. You know, it's not for ourselves and it's not just for mm-hmm. our family. It's not just for the people that God has entrusted to us. Like it's like, Lord, bring your kingdom. And he's gonna do that strangely through us. Like that that's the way he's chosen it to to occur. So it's really, really important that we keep bringing those places before God, like to the healing hand, the loving hand of the Father, because I think it's impossible to lead with authority when you're a little kid. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Amen. Like you have to grow and mature to be able to lead with the authority that God's given to Mm -hmm. us. And we've all seen the picture of like the little girl with the big crown and the robe on and it doesn't fit her. And it's like, you know, (laughs) but that's how oftentimes we try to lead. Yeah. Wow. That's good, Heather. Beautiful. Yeah, I think also it reminds me of, I think I'm sure we've talked about this before, but you know, the Dan Allender Center, they often talk about how healing happens is through being honoring and honest mm-hmm. and both have to be present for us to heal. And I'm just thinking of our listeners right now who maybe just had some really, really, really painful experiences with authority with mom and dad or with a teacher or with a coach mm-hmm. or with a boss and really broken, like really catastrophic. And it's hard to see like it's hard to hear. I have to honor them. Like, you know, it's, it's hard to hear when there's so much pain and so much brokenness. And I think, you know, healing is not throwing our parents under the bus or our coworkers under the bus that nobody ever heals. Like blame doesn't heal, mm-hmm. but neither does living in dishonesty and pretending things didn't happen. And so both are very painful. But both have to be there. And so sometimes maybe all we can see is all we can honor is that that person is somewhere they're made in the image and likeness of God. And somewhere there's a seed of goodness in them. And then maybe that's for some of us, like that's all we can see in that person who's hurt us. And then also just to be honest in the places where we have been hurt and that, and then also honest in the places where we continue to pass that on to other people. Amen. And yeah, I, we'll mm-hmm. talk more about this next week, but you know, we talk about unholy inner vows. We're out of pain. We've said, I will never, I, you know, out of our own self-reliance, I will never hurt somebody the way my father hurt, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. I will never be like my mother. I will never speak to other people the way my coach talked to me. And then we find ourselves bound to the very things we hate. And we do maybe not the exact same thing, but variations of the same thing that we promised we would never do the thing that hurt us most deeply. And those are very spirit, powerful, spiritual and psychological realities. And I, so I think coming to allowing the Holy spirit. So all of this is about the Holy spirit, like the Holy spirit, where do I, in the people in my life in authority, where do I need to be both honoring and mm-hmm. honest, you know, and for myself and for others. And that is the path to healing. And, and that, and that happens little by little. And that opens our heart to breakthrough. It opens our heart to encounter the, the risen Lord Jesus. It, it opens our heart in those places because then it, it, it helps soften our hearts where our hearts are hard out of self-protection, which is understandable. Mm. Like our hearts have been hurting, so we self-protect, but Jesus is showing us another way mm. that doesn't happen by magic. It happens through the miraculous power of his love that we we receive and, and allow to work in us and like op- give us an open heart mm-hmm. massage. Amen. Did, it, did everybody just hear that? It doesn't happen by magic. <laughs> it yeah. happens by a miraculous encounter with his love. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And those are places that I think, you know, there's a process of, of forgiveness that we can begin to enter into. And these are some of the things we're going to talk about in the next episode. We want to get really practical about uh, renouncing lies and declaring the truth. We want to talk about forgiving ourselves, but also how do we ask for forgiveness from other people that we've hurt and model what it looks like to repair and restore, because that's also what God Mm -hmm. invites us into. So I'm excited about where we're going in this series. It's good. Well, Heather, would you like to share your one thing with us? Yeah, it feels weird to just like jump into one things after having such like a deep it's conversation. Know, but huh? here we are. This is what we do. We switch between recipes yeah. and deep content. Okay, this mm-hmm, is all the things mm-hmm. we offer you at Abide Together. So I do have a recipe actually. You know how you get stuck in like certain flavors and stuff in your house? I'm like mm-hmm. really good at like certain things. And then here came my brother over at my parents' house, which their house is attached to ours, remember? And he cooked up this chicken Thai coconut curry soup. Oh get out of here. my goodness, it blew the doors right off and I had to get the recipe right away, which I am passing on to you guys immediately because it was so good. It was so good. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, it is mm-hmm. wonderful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's it. Mm-hmm. You can find it in the show mm-hmm. notes. Ooh. Okay, oh, Michelle. Will. All Michelle right, Mich- Michelle. My one thing is good friends of ours, Kelly Lombardi and Josh Blakesley just released this beautiful album of Catholic lullabies based to the beautiful prayers of the church. 
I mean, they have How ones lovely. from St. Teresa so of beautiful. Avila, Not Let Nothing Disturb You, St. Faustina, St. Therese, St. Augustine. I mean, it is lovely. And it's called Beatify Music. Mm-hmm. And I will post the link. And even if you don't have little people that sing lullabies, everybody needs a lullaby. We all need a lullaby. We all need a lullaby. Mm-hmm. It's just good. It is. It's just good. There's even my favorite quote from JP2 in there that they did a song yes. of, of. It's Jesus that you seek when you dream of happiness. Yes. Like, I'm so mm-hmm. proud of them. And the cover's beautiful. They just did such an awesome job. The cover job. is cheering beautiful. You Whoever the artist is for the gorgeous. cover, we love it. Absolutely mm-hmm. love it. And so it is gorgeous. So Kelly and Josh, we love you guys. So proud of your project. And well done, guys. We will post mm-hmm. the link in the show notes, sister. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, in keeping with our discussion this week and kind of what we touched on last week, Michelle recommended a book, uh, Befriending Your Inner Child um, by Bria Hennon. I would like to recommend the book this week, Litanies of the Heart by Dr. Jerry Crete, which is excellent. Excellent. He's also on the, the, the three-part series on parts that we recommended last week from Restore the Glory, uh, Dr. Bob Schutz and Jay Kim. They did a three-part series on parts, and Dr. Jerry Crete is the first guest they have on that series. And Litanies of the Heart really explains, like we talk about, you know, leading with God-given authority. It's leading from the core mm-hmm. self that dwells with God. It's the, it's the most mature, most attuned, receptive part. And when we can lead and live from that part, it helps bring harmony not only to ourselves and our relationship with God, but with others as well. So, and it's got some really beautiful litanies in it. This morning I was praying. Oh, I love it. I was praying the litany of the closed heart. And I was like, ooh, wait, there were some places where I was like, oh, that was... But it's so beautiful and so kind. And just so honestly, he grounds it in St. Thomas Aquinas and church teaching and the catechism and scripture. So yeah, if you're looking for a good book on a, a way of looking at internal family systems, but also but from a Catholic perspective of taking the deepest part of our faith and allowing what is good, true, and beautiful in that modality to shine, you're really going to like it. So I would highly recommend Litanies at the Heart by Dr. Jerry Crete. Good one. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, dear friends, we will conclude and we'll continue our series on leading with God given authority. Next week, we're going, to talk, we're going to talk about spiritual authority and how do we, how do, what does it mean to really fight in the battle, the spiritual battle with the Lord? What is that? What are the tools that He gives us? And what are some concrete things that you can begin to do today that will help you in that battle with Jesus to to win the victory um, that He's won for us to, to stand with Him? So thank you for joining us. And until next week, we will be abiding together. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. If you liked it, would you please share it with a friend and leave us a review? We encourage you to head over to our website, abidingtogetherpodcast.com, where you can find all the show notes, links to our one things, group discussion questions for each episode, and beautiful coffee mugs, t-shirts, journals, and prints in our shop. There you can also subscribe to receive our weekly email with links to each new episode and all of the content. We'd love to connect on social media and invite you to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter so you can catch inspiring reflections every day. You're also welcome to join our private Facebook group and dive deeper into discussions with our fellow listeners. If the podcast has blessed you, would you prayerfully consider financially supporting us? The Body Together podcast is only available due to the generous support of our listeners. There are significant costs associated with creating this content, such as tech support, design, website, equipment, and hired staff that we need to be able to continue offering great content. Abiding Together is a nonprofit 501c3, and all donations are tax deductible. You can make donations of any amount through the Patreon website, or you can send us a check directly if that's easier for you. If you donate $15 or more per month on our Patreon page, you become a tribe member and you will receive bonus content every month, such as recipes, music playlists, downloadable prints, and more. You can find all the information at patreon.com slash abidingtogetherpodcast. Thank you so much and God bless you.